This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good morning to Think Tech Hawaii and Jay Fidel's Global Connection Show. Uh, my name is Martin Despang. I'm today's guest. Uh, Jay will probably uh, join us soon. And until then, I will tell you a little bit about the topic of the show. And the topic is, as I called it, inclusive Germany. So I'm sitting here in the capacity of being a native of Germany. And uh, if you've seen my face before, in my other capacity, I'm a host here for Human Humane Architecture, um, always on uh, Tuesdays in the uh, afternoon. A little bit of promotion for that. But let's talk about Germany. That's what Jay was interested to see what Germany looks like in 2017 and compare some things. And maybe we start out with some data. Germany has a population of roughly 80 million people, whereas the U.S. has a population of, uh, which is four times as big, about uh, 320 million people. Uh, both cultures and countries uh, hit number one and two as the top destination for immigration. The United States leads, and Germany is the second uh, following that. And so um, what, what does that mean? What kind of impact does that have on, on life, on everyday life? That's what we're going to talk about. And uh, I provided some images that we will show in the background here. Um, these are two projects that I've uh, been doing with my family business uh, over the last uh, decades, which are public projects. This one here is an is a, is a on-grade a light rail uh, tram station. And um, the other one we're going to show is a, is a kindergarten, both public projects. And the guys you see here is uh, a local uh, emerging architect who uh, visited me uh, last summer. And we were just sitting down and having a coffee and, and looking what's, uh, what's going on. And we were, uh, we were positively uh, surprised um, if we can walk through a couple more pictures, uh, maybe do picture number uh, six right away, that um, you see the United Nations on, the, on that platform. You see a diversity uh, of, of people. However, uh, coming back to the facts and numbers, uh, Germany uh, pretty much uh, consists of 80% um, of uh, or 90% uh, Germans and only, uh, you know, um, a lower percentage of uh, other people from the European uh, Union. And then until now, a rather small percentage of people from, from all over the world. However, as you can see in this picture, this has changed uh, recently uh, dramatically because as you guys probably know from the news, uh, we have created what we uh, call the Willkommenskultur, which is uh, translated to be the uh, welcoming culture of Germany. And what that means, we're going to tell you in a minute after a short break when our host, Jay Fidel, will join us. See you in a minute. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hello, I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha. 
Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Judd Rawlson here, folks, your host on Where the Drone Leads, our weekly show at noon on Thursdays here on Think Tech, where we talk about drones, anything to do about drones, drones, remotely piloted aircraft, unmanned air crystals, whatever you want to call them, emerging into Hawaii's economy, educational framework, and our public life. We talk about things associated with the use, the misuse, uh, technology, engineering, legislation, with the local experts as well as people from across the country. Please join us noon on Thursdays and catch the latest on what's taking place in the world of drones that might affect you. So I'll pick it up again, yeah. Okay, we're back uh, and I'm, I'm with Martin today and Martin is gonna help us transition from what he was talking about the first few minutes until now, until my late arrival. <laughs> Martin, what were you talking about and how does that transition to what we're gonna do now? Well, it's totally fine, Jay. And we, we started to talk about Germany and compare it to the United States as far as numbers, uh, number of people living there, but also ranking. Uh, we're both ranking number one and number two as far as the most popular immigrant destination. The United <laughs> States, yeah. we don't know how that will be in the future. Why is that? Why is Germany? I, uh, punctuation, we, we had an on-the-street interview of a woman from Sweden. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, what do you think about the migrants in Sweden? Mm -hmm. She says, we're not kind enough to them. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not take care of them the way I think we should, mm -hmm. the way my generation thinks mm -hmm. we should. We admire Germany. Mm -hmm. Germany takes care of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, this is a great transition from before the break because I closed with introducing a term that I think has been installed to describe, and that's called Willkommenskultur, and it means welcoming culture. That's how society tries to phrase what it's supposed to do and what it wants to do. And uh, my partner, Suzanne, who wanted to be on the show, and you also said that's interesting to talk about why she isn't on the show, because her family business got hit by Harvey, hit oh, hard. Yeah, yeah. And so that's another thing we might want to talk should, about, global talk connections about and, and how our reactions and, and actions how might be time you that got, one. Martin? Sometime. <laughs> <laughs> but we also talked in front of the show, so I'm also representing her opinions here, and we talked about this just before the show, and we said, if we look back at our culture, uh, we have been welcomed by Americans, and I just had the privilege to become American too, but while keeping my German citizenship, citizen, yeah, right? That's wonderful. And so, thank you. And so, but I wouldn't be here if Americans wouldn't help us out after we screwed up pretty badly at the beginning of the last century. And our current Chancellor Merkel is the one who had facilitated, we should say, as, as our leader, this uh, welcoming culture. And, and she has always so been welcomed because she's from former East Germany. And so the whole Germany has welcomed back, right? Uh, East Germany. She's not alone. She's popular. She's People pop like her. She's popular, yes, in general, yes. But of course, there's a... Uh, Let's say if you create a culture that is, that is uh, human and, and shows humanity and humility, there's always people who disagree with that and who don't like that. And unfortunately, the media are going to dwell on these people, yeah. right? And so that, that actually accelerates it somehow, it leverages it. Exactly. Gives them too, a little attention, but it's raw meat kind of news, mm -hmm. and so it takes more oxygen than it should. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, you probably you know, can ask sociologists about this phenomenon of how much burden do we Germans carry with us? You know, how yeah, much I'll do we... Yeah, I'll ask that question. Yeah. And how much burden do you carry with you? I carry a lot, and I'm, I'm happy that I carry that, because in high school, all the way through high school, um, the Holocaust was addressed a lot, and my oldest son still had a Holocaust survivor brought in high school, and that's one of the last ones because they die out, yeah. and he was in his 90s, and he broke out in tears in front of the students. So, you know, my son and his peers are lucky to have eyewitnessed that that was real, yeah. and that's, that's really important. Your and I son, think, how does he feel about it now? 
He feels good. I mean, it was, it was a burden, but it's a good burden to carry because it reminds us of not let this happen again ever. Did he get that from you also? I mean, how do you feel? I, I got that. I got that. I mean, it was uh, the, the more the generations are removed from it and the more remote, you know, the more abstract it gets. So it's important that society addresses that oh, in, sure. in, in current, you know, discourses and, and, and readings and, well, and talks. Dwelling on it for a minute, you know, there are people, actually many people, some say even an increasing number of people who mm -hmm. deny mm -hmm. the Holocaust, mm -hmm. say it did not happen. Mm -hmm. There are people who, you know, for either don't know or deny or forget what happened and they they carry uh, uh, if you will a brand new kind of anti-semitism mm -hmm, now mm -hmm, in Europe mm -hmm, and in the US mm -hmm, even mm -hmm. in Hawaii mm -hmm, actually mm -hmm, mm -hmm. think about that that's really scary that's really scary and I was brought thanks to my parents thanks mom and dad was brought up very liberal and say to tolerate everyone and maybe our way of making up is, is our work as architects and the pictures we're going to show <laughs> you. know, in, I think there's really something to that. Yeah. Because what you do is a gift. Yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, I, we show the train stations in the back and you see uh, black people and brown people and yellow people. And this is in Germany. I was just pulling the numbers. You know, Germany is, is as predominantly white as America is. Sure. And, and so we have the majority of the population is from Germany, and we have uh, a minority of other Europeans. That's changing. That's changing. And that's this sort of which we call the migration wave. And I think personally this is awesome. And if you... If How's you, the integration of it though, Martin? Because, uh, you know, there are incidents. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're in the mm -hmm. German papers. Mm -hmm. uh, they're mm -hmm. certainly once in a while they're in the U.S. papers. Mm -hmm. um, about um, migrants who don't behave, migrants mm -hmm. who get in trouble, migrants who treat women badly, who abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, who abuse not only the women, but the whole system. Because, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I wonder if this, is, if this is a problem. I guess it must be a problem on a small level, but mm -hmm. it was a larger problem. On, and maybe it creates a right wing that wants to, you know, mm -hmm. fight back to mm -hmm. that. But... Mm -hmm. uh, how do, you, how do you feel the integration of these mm -hmm. migrants is mm -hmm. going? Well, I'd like to answer with maybe bringing up picture number, uh, let's say number eight. So this is the other project I just visited with some Hawaii uh, students, emerging architects last summer. And we were visiting that kindergarten that at the very right from the top, we make reference to a show from the previous uh, urban transcendence days. Mm -hmm. And this one was called Woody Keiki Garden. And I did a, what we call in architecture a post-occupancy evaluation to see evidence-based design performance and see how does it work, you know, architecturally and more recently socially. And I'm really proud of my kindergartner, the director, Ms. Savitza, whom I interviewed. And she said uh, already then, it's just awesome. We got kids from all over the world. And I say, how about the Syrians now are coming? And she said, that is even better because we were lacking them. The more, the better, the diverse, diversity, the better. Diversity is good. She said, it's great. And said, well, we get along. If we don't, we work it out, you know, and we're in our community. And at the same time, this traces to Harvey. At the same time, this is an off-the-grid kindergarten. This is the first, which I call post-fossil kindergarten for the city of Hanover. So these kids grew up going home, teaching their parents that the furnace they have, they don't need. Sure. And they teach the, the kids that they get along with everyone in the world. God, this is beautiful. Isn't this is it? Beautiful. Isn't but it? And, and, you know. and, but coming back, so I phrase this up front positively because I think this is important. And then there is like in every system there are exceptions to the rule. Where people, and this is maybe bringing number 14, this is something that Suzanne provided. This is from her, her uh, ho uh, hometown, from her little community. Um, if we get picture 14. 14. And, and this, what you see in the center there, is, is housing, is new housing that this little community provided for the new migrants. migrants. And this is, this is high standard. This is nice wood siding, oh, yeah. you know. This How many is, families are in there? Uh, I have to guess, you can probably, you see a guy at the very bottom right, uh, mm -hmm. you know, down there. So you can probably say there's probably like maybe 16 families in there. And it's pretty nice standard. And, it's, it's, and it's a gesture from the society it's saying, free. it's free, yeah. And they're welcome. Oh, wow. And at the very top right, you see an addition to the high school in town, which they had provided shipping containers, <laughs> and also the but music you school in this there. I, I you're was, a shipping container well, kind of guy. But, but not that kind of. <laughs> this is what gets me going to do it better, right? So there are some people, yes, who basically say, well, our kids end up in shipping containers, whereas the foreign kids and foreign people get more privileged, right? 
But yeah, right, because the resentment but, there, yeah. Yeah, but, but quoting Suzanne who said, if, if a society wants to be in harmony and in balance, everyone needs to be happy. And we cannot then sort of privilege some over others. We gotta, we gotta be fair. And people who come and have nothing, they need decent housing first and foremost. And if our kids have to sit in some shipping containers for some hours, that's fine and fair, and it should be, right? <laughs> fair is fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, you're talking about a, a pretty literate, uh, intellectual, moral approach. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about you and Suzanne and the people who build that housing mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and who are, you know, your, you know, your compadres, your yeah. like, like thinkers. Mm -hmm. But um, is this generally held? I mean, I know there's always going to be a 1% of, um, you know, fascists and, Mm -hmm. and reactionaries and mm -hmm. skinheads and whatnot, mm -hmm. present company excluded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> but, but um, you know, how, how is this generally held, this view? Um, other, I mean, is it noticeable that there's that other 1% that is making trouble? Um, if I walked down the street in Hanover or any city in mm -hmm. Germany, mm -hmm. would I be able to find people like you and Suzanne? I think, I mean, it, it will tell, you know, at the next election, which is coming up soon, you know, get, does Merkel get reelected or not? There, there are those who would like to She's a candidate -elect again, her, yeah. so she's not opposed to it. And, and we will see, because mainly she... she hasn't changed. She, no, she hasn't she's changed. She's stuck on her yeah. morality. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she says, you know, we had to do this. There was, there's even no question for her. And, and I believe, and you can probably pull polls and do statistics and can see how many are with her. And I, I think... I believe, as far as I know, the majority is with her and is with her attitude. And then there is a minority that we need to talk to these people and educate these people uh, to say, think about it. I mean, think about, and maybe ways to make it very more clear to these people is when someone says, well, why would I support the education of a refugee? who wants to be a doctor in our country. And you know, our education, I avoid to say education is free. I prefer to say in Germany, everyone pays for everyone's education because that's the way it is, right? <laughs> but it is free to it, the individual. It, it, there's no cost to the individual. Same thing yes. in France. But there, yeah, but there's a cost to society and every taxpayer, some parts of their tax dollar, uh, euros, sorry, mm -hmm. go to get, get evenly distributed to all public schools and all public universities. And that's a pretty good system. Yeah, and in the notion, it's not, it's not socialist so much as you want an educated public. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. an educated public is a, it's a better country. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it means the relationship between the citizen and the government, the citizen and the community is mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can see mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I admire that in Europe, wherever it happens in Europe. And I really wonder, honestly, mm -hmm. and you changed, you know, you took out American citizenship, so you have mm -hmm. to deal with this. Mm -hmm. I wonder why it hasn't happened here. Mm -hmm. And there's no, no real talk about it, is mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, that's true. And you got to, I mean, we've seen this in history. You got to make the everyday, the ordinary everyday people, the average Joel, you got to, and Josephine, you got to keep them happy. You got to make them happy. So you got to make sure there's social equity for everyone. And if there's inequity, people start to get frustrated, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you have to sort of balance this out. But constantly educate. If you, be, if you educate, if you tell people, well, Germans don't make enough love to sustain their culture, right? <laughs> Statistics again, we have a little less than 1.5 children we produce, right? And that's not it's enough. Too to, low, too low. That's not sustaining our culture. So even from that point of view, we need these new citizens to sustain. And then we get more. I was preparing for the show. I was trying to label my, my caption, my pictures. And one of them I called the uh, uh, United Colors. And that reminded me of an of a, um, uh, advertising campaign by the fashion brand Benetton way back when sure. I was a kid in the 80s. They were ahead of the times. I wasn't a kid then, and, but I do remember yeah, it very yeah, well. Yeah, you do. <laughs> so this sort of, you know, united colors of... Of Benetton, yeah. Exactly. And, and it said so much. It, it was said, much more than clothing. It, it was, it was. And I think the message was clear. It, 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 wasn't, it didn't came across as just being, you know, sales pitchy. So Suzanne, again, you know, her hometown is a very typical, you know, small town and, and very sort of, you know, strong heritage. That's Bavaria, by the way. That's Munich. That's what Americans can consider to that's be the most. That's where they have the, the beer. Most, exactly. The Lederhosen, and the Dürrendl, <laughs> all of that, right? And she said, well, when I grew up, you know, I hardly ever saw a black person. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I see, like, 
black people, you know, walking by my house and, and being integrated. Yeah, and then yeah. there's, you were pointing out the, the Cologne tragedy at uh, Christmas yeah, Eve, right. the rape, right, the, right, kind right. Of the massive the rape, rape yeah. you know. Okay, that's what we hear, that's what we read. But if we see, you know, black people walking by a house and being happy and chit-chatting and not causing any and trouble. And engaging with us. Because that's the real thing. And, you know, coming back to my kids, they always were watching TV and the news and about Muslim and, you know, this sort of weird, strange world out there. And they weren't sure. Yeah. And I was really happy once they had Muslims in their class and some of them became their friends. And yeah. My oldest son, Joey. And all of a sudden, it was like, well, these are the same people as we are. Yeah. And that's the same, again, in the projects. If you stand next to these on the train station. And I ride the train, public transportation, exclusively in Germany. No and car. I, and I've never been afraid, you know, of, of anyone throwing a bomb or stabbing me. Although every once in a while, yes, it happens and yeah, it occurs. Yeah, 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 but it's, yeah. not, it's not this paranoia, at least not for me. Well, and I, I want to go to that. I want to go to this whole notion about uh, the migrants are there, okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Some of them don't behave very well, mm -hmm. um, but some of them do. Mm -hmm. And so what's the new Germany going to look like? Because um, Merkel and hopefully the people that re-elect her mm -hmm. uh, believe in the, the new world, mm -hmm. the new mm -hmm. Germany. Mm -hmm. Really, it's mm -hmm. the new Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, and have all these people from very diverse groups. And I bought, by the way, I would add to that footnote that, uh, and this is a Thomas Friedman book that mm -hmm. came out recently called um, uh, Thank You for Being Late. That's the title mm -hmm. of the book. But mm -hmm. one of the points he, he makes is that of the migrants that come into mm -hmm. into Europe, mm -hmm. one third are from the Middle East and mm -hmm. two thirds are from Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I I expect that that's that's the percentages that of migrants that are coming to Germany as well mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's the general mm -hmm. rule of it. Mm -hmm. um, so clearly, I mean, are they getting along? Are they speaking German? You know, mm -hmm. one of the problems in these countries is they never learn the language mm -hmm. of the country. Mm -hmm. Are they reading, writing, speaking? Are they following the customs mm -hmm. uh, or are they maintaining a sort of separate insulated kind of old culture you know mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. uh, their their origin country culture i mean how's mm -hmm. that working is it is there a, a, a an assimilation mm -hmm. well that's a i think integration is is the key word and uh, i ran a show in our hum, human humane architecture that was called the grant waikiki grant so my building here in Honolulu, and we're the most culturally diverse place in the United States, and I, I keep saying and insisting that my place where I live is the most inclusive place in Honolulu. <laughs> like Kiki Grant. Yeah, yeah, and it's we got people of all kinds. Which That's we, why you're there. I which, know we, it which we pointed out in the show. And, you want that. <laughs> you know, and this is the headquarters of the gay community, and I'm not gay, and I've never been in touch with gay people, and yeah. I grew up with, like, being tolerant, so of course I was, but I had some, you know, I didn't know, so it was kind of... And I didn't even find out until I was probably running around and telling my colleagues what a great place I had. And they gave me a look and said, oh, you never told us. And I said, what, guys? So it's really teaching me, you know, to be open and, and not having this paranoia or being suspicious. And we have a good track record in Germany because this didn't start now in the, in the 70s, right, when the economy was doing well. Germans all of a sudden didn't want to do the dirty jobs anymore, right? And so they let's were, have migrants. And yeah. they were asking next door in Turkey. And the Turkey, the Turkish people were kind of, you know, didn't have that many jobs. And they came. And now we have, I mean, the, the two guys who were visiting me, uh, you know, Chris Chagueta and Shiraj, we went to a donut place, right? <laughs> and the, the students in Germany live off Döner because the Döner is the cheapest and most delicious fast food you can get. And we owe that to what's the... A, what's a Döner we, we owe that, we owe that to the... To the uh, well, I should take you to the Döner <laughs> store. We have one here in downtown, okay. pretty close. So it's basically a bun, yeah. and then you have coleslaw and, and meat in there and, and salad and tomato. <laughs> so it's like a Turkish burger, right? And it's three euros, and you're, like, filled up for the most of the day, right? And we owe this, we owe this to Turkish culture. And, and, and so this is the new idea. The idea is that we welcome the new cultures, yeah. and we are building a new culture in the country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we, are, we are preserving certain things that are German that's fundamental, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. we also are taking other things. We're building a sort of a collective culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and it's remarkable that enough people feel that way, mm -hmm, that it's mm -hmm, happening. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose, if not 
right away, then soon enough, enough people who are migrating into Germany mm -hmm. will also feel that way, that they're players yeah. in the development of this new combined I would say culture. So. Yeah. That's something. And I think what's important that it's not a melting pot, what the United States have been called. Yeah. Or, I think it's important it's a quilt. A quilt. And, <laughs> yes, a quilt. And you can still identify the pieces. If you look at it from a distance, it's a, it's a unified pattern, right? But if you look up close, you see the, the, the patterns, the individual pieces that yeah, it's yeah. stitched together with. And I think that's, that, that's pretty awesome. And, and, and you know, uh, with a Turkish, now you have two generations of Turkish who, who grew up in, in Germany, right? And they, they, they have German nationality and they speak German. They can get to be citizens. That's and not a problem. Citizens. Yeah, and what do you have to do to become a citizen of Germany? You know, honestly, I have to do more homework because I never had that problem. But I can tell you a lot about what I had to do to keep my German citizenship while not losing oh, it while getting automatic. the American. No, this uh -huh. is not automatic. And yeah, that yeah. makes me a little mad about my culture, my original culture, because yeah, there's yeah. little information about that. So if you're even more naive than I am, uh, you, <laughs> you just apply for the American and you automatically use your German citizenship. One of the reasons I wanted to have this conversation with you, I have many reasons, and I hope we can do it again, you know, mm -hmm. sort of connect the dots. It's very important for us to connect the dots with faraway places and mm -hmm. cultures to learn from them. <clears throat> but one of the reasons I want to have this conversation with you is because we live in a very dynamic time. Europe, Europe is dynamic. The migrants uh, mm -hmm. are changing things. It may not be big numbers, you know, relative to the entire population, but it's going to be. Uh, and it's not going to be just Germany. It's going to be every country there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then in the U.S. things are changing uh, backwardly, in my opinion, but mm -hmm. they, that's just that's me. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're losing ground every day, and mm -hmm. you're here, and in the mm -hmm. face of all of that, you take out American citizenship. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. I hope you knew what you were getting into, yeah? Mm -hmm. While other people are trying to take out citizenship elsewhere yeah, <laughs> in yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah. But, and then you travel. You do, you, you do your profession in mm -hmm. Germany with, mm -hmm. what, three offices mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. And then you come here and teach uh, at the architect school. Um, so you're involved in a sort of a, a, a global arbitrage of ideas, of cultures, and you make the trip a couple, three times a year, whatever mm -hmm. it is, mm -hmm. and you can compare not only the place uh, in a static fashion, but mm -hmm. the place in a dynamic fashion. Mm -hmm. and so my question to you, you just came back from a summer in Germany. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you return, mm -hmm. and you're looking at this arbitrage in cultures. Mm -hmm. What did you learn this summer, Martin? What did you learn in Germany, about Germany, and mm -hmm. what did you learn in Germany thinking about the U.S. and watching it devolve mm -hmm. under our present uh, mm -hmm. Trump, mm -hmm. Trump administration? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's use picture number 15 as the background illustration for One that One picture is worth a thousand words. Which, uh, <laughs> which shows me, uh, if we can get 15, please, which shows me at the very left uh, here just holding my fresh American citizen certificate in front of that Obama mural mm -hmm. uh, close at the end of Ward and uh, Kapolyani Boulevard. And at the bottom right, we see me in line with uh, 65 other aliens at that time who uh -huh. local boy Bra Barrick pulled through. Uh -huh. In fact, the morning after the tragic election of the president. So we're a lot of the lucky ones, which I'm pretty sure he said, okay, let's get these people in as, as long as we can. <laughs> right. And at the very top right was the evening of the, uh, the, the, the election, the, the president election. And we, as a therapy, we attended the mayor's re-election. <laughs> and, and this is my German uh, consul, honorary consul, Dennis Seller, who looks a little, you know, Look at his face, that tells a lot. And we're actually more celebrating that I kept my German citizenship at that point, which is sad because I think I'm in many ways, I probably would argue I'm in many ways maybe more patriotic than some American in sort of a uh, Americano way, in a very yeah, yeah, sentimental, yeah, 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 yeah. romantic way. Well, immigrants are often more patriotic than that, the that I That are. I more wanted to see the good things, and which I still believe in. but. Sort of the answer to your question would be that sort of having been in Germany and coming back, it's almost that I feel like um, we are in Germany with our welcoming culture, almost like where America was, it, was in its founding phase. Yeah. Where we're just saying, we need all of you guys to make this work out. Yeah. The more of you, the better. Together we can work this out. Yeah. And I think somehow you use that great term of the... Well, I use de-evolution, you know, there's evolution and there's de-evolution. So we have to do something to remind us Americans 
that we should return to that welcoming spirit, to that spirit of inclusivity. And you know, my therapy for that is the privilege which you mentioned to be at school and to be around the emerging generation. And together, you know, say there is no boundaries between us. You know, yeah. we're all world citizens, and we have to make an impact of what, as you know from our human humane architecture show, I call um, planet and people friendly architecture. And that's addressing, you know, m my discipline. Especially valuable say, here. We got to save the world, of course, with whatever we design has to stop global warming that gets us back to Harvey, right? But at the same time, and as important and recently increasingly more important for me. I've been going back and looking at my buildings that they're holding up. Their energy performance is still the same, but increasingly I look back how they're socially performing. And if they basically support inclusivity and, and, and humility and humanity, and, and that gets me going. And I think that's what we have to remind ourselves on a daily basis, how lucky, how spoiled we are, how privileged we are where we live in both cultures, Western cultures and that we have to be loyal to the ones who are not as lucky as we are. And, you know, um, they come from, uh, from areas where, you know, either political or natural catastrophes have destroyed, pulled the, the carpet Africa, under their for feet. for example. And, and we're so privileged. I mean, you know, Suzanne tells her kids, we go back to Germany. There's no earthquake, there's no hurricane, there's no such thing, right? It's one of the safest places on Earth. And so if we're on that, on that island, right, not geographically, but as far as safely, yeah. we have to let other people, you know, join that yeah. island. And, and going back to that, when I was mentioning the, uh, you know, the perception of if I'm a citizen who's maybe not that educated and a little narrow-minded, but if you tell these people, well, if this refugee, you support his medical school by some euros of your tax money and you get into a car accident, and that's the guy who, who happens you. to be there and saves your life. Yeah. Wouldn't that be a smart idea? Be worth every penny. Right, right. Let's make a better society. Mm -hmm. so, you know, you know. Some people uh, say, "Let's Mer make America hate again." Yeah, <laughs> I've heard that. Uh -huh. uh, how about let's make America inclusive again? Yeah, absolutely. You heard it here on Think Tech. You got Martin Despang just returned. Great to have you back. Good Martin. to be back. Thank you, Jay. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha.